also I want to see more musicians, um, different musicians, not harpists, actually embracing the harp. Hi Lucy, thank you very much for coming to Hot Connections. How are you doing today? Hi Victoria, I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Tell us about yourself. Where are you from and where are you calling in today? Well, I'm from Scotland. I grew up near Aberdeen, which is a city on the East Coast. Um, but I've spent the last uh, eight years, I think, in living in Glasgow, studying there and living as a professional musician for the past few years. However, I'm calling from Denmark today because <laughs> I recently uh, moved here in uh, February to a city called Esberg, which is on the west coast of Denmark. That's awesome. Our guests uh, are all over the globe. So that's that's really exciting for me to meet people from different corners of the world that are all playing harp. Tell us about your harp journey and how do you come to know the harp and how um, how far have you come since you, you start? Because I, I, I know some of my guests start very early, some start later. Everyone has a unique story to tell. So I would love to learn about your harp journey. Yeah, well, I started quite early on. Um, my harp journey began on the piano, actually. So I began piano lessons when I was five. And my teacher, she played the harp as well. And the harp, um, it was always sat in the corner of the room that I learned on. And um, I, I don't know why I was just very drawn to the harp, but she wouldn't let me start until I grasped the piano. Because <laughs> it is quite so much difference. Um, but I'm, I'm very <clears throat> happy for that like, foundation with the piano first and the transition onto the harp was um, fairly straightforward for me after a few years. So I started the harp when I was eight years old and uh, I think I had quite a uh, more of a solo <laughs> journey or solo experience um, as a musician kind of growing up. Um, because I just went for lessons, but I, I wasn't really involved in any groups or anything. Um, I would say that I, I uh, became attracted to folk music or Scottish folk music from an early age because my dad was particularly interested in it and he played the fiddle. So that was a big influence um, in my musical journey. And well, yeah, from an early age, <clears throat> I was drawn to that music. And um, uh, it was probably my favorite genre to listen to at school. I think I must have been the only person <laughs> in my school that liked folk music. Uh, so I, I definitely felt a little of the odd one out, but that's okay. <laughs> have you played the harp with your dad's fiddle together? As a duo? Yeah. Well, we used to have a little family Kaylee band on the go because my mom, she played a bit of Baran as well. And then um, my brother started learning fiddle. So yeah, it was a bit of a family thing, but <laughs> it was cute. It that was sounds cute. very exciting. Yeah, but um, so yeah, it was is probably more of a solo journey until I I left my high school a year early to go to a, a traditional music school on the west coast of Scotland in a beautiful village called Plockton, and the, this school um, is called the National Centre of Le of Excellence in Traditional Music. And that was really the start of a, a creative journey for me in the harp. And, you know, I was very much challenged to arrange music on the harp. And um, I, I'd always liked composition throughout my, my high school, um, but it was just more focused um, to the harp when I, when I moved over there. And um, then it was during that year that I decided that a music career was for me. So I decided to move to Glasgow and study there. Um, I started off in Glasgow University on the general music course, because at the time I didn't know if I, if I should specialize in folk music. I kind of wanted to keep my options open, but I found during the recitals, I kept coming back to the folk repertoire and I couldn't quite leave it. <laughs> so I was like, why am I, <laughs> why am I trying? I should just embrace <laughs> a folk music degree. And yeah, there was one, thankfully, at the uh, Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. So I moved there, managed to get placed there after two years in Glasgow Uni and completed the remaining three years there. 
And uh, yeah, so then three years ago, I graduated from there. And ever since, I have been a freelance musician, artist. So. That's fantastic. Now, I read your bio, and you have mentioned that you have performed quite a lot, uh, including Canada, which is where I am, and of course, in, uh, in the UK. Uh, what are some of your me more memorable performing experience? I think a lot of musicians I have talked to have told me that performance is probably one of the most enjoyable aspects of their musical career, being be to be able to perform in front of an audience. I would love to hear some of your more memorable experiences in performing. Yeah. Well, I'd say one of the most memorable experiences was from uh, was it 20, 2019. Um, it was probably the, one of the last gigs uh, before the pandemic hit. And I'd actually, I'd gone across to Brussels with um, my, in my duo, uh, Aves of May. And um, we went across there with a, a charity that we work with called Live Music Now Scotland. And uh, it was for a St. Andrew's Day um, performances. Uh, so it was uh, end of November time, I think. And um, <laughs> I remember the last night that we were there, <laughs> we weren't given so many details about the gigs that we were doing, but we ended up playing this Kaylee. Um, and uh, it, was this, it was for St. Andrew's Day. And um, I remember it was in a marquee tent in the middle of uh, a roundabout in Brussels, but it was like surrounded by EU buildings. And the, the marquee, it was filled with Christmas trees because it was almost December. <laughs> so it was just the most random situation, but it was great because everyone was up for dancing. So, it, you know, they were just having, uh, lots of like people from Brussels, from from Brussels, come and expats as well, who just wanted to you know embrace their uh, Scottish heritage. So I was really lovely, and you know you don't often um, play for for dances where everybody's up for dancing the whole night, but it's just like their energy was so good, and that made our job so much easier. So it's just funny, like I I love the the kind of. Um, <laughs> The random places that you you can end up as a musician and completely unexpected places so that would that would definitely be a highlight for me that's so far. brilliant <laughs> yeah. and talking about uh your duo um mm -hmm. eva may can you tell us a little bit more about the work that you do in this duo and also some of the other collaboration work that uh, you've been working on yeah yeah uh so Abe's and may was established in 2018 and it was just after I graduated and I started working with my friend Becky Amphlett, who is a, a fiddle a violin player. So uh, she's got more of a, a classical background um, and she she came across to Glasgow um, to do her master's in the traditional music course uh, where I was studying. So our paths just kind of crossed. Um, and after we both finished, uh, we didn't really have anything we were like right what we're we gonna do uh, should we start playing with each other and see where it goes so that's exactly what we did and um, we thought we'd aim for some Christmas gigs that year um, which was it gave us a nice focus and uh, yeah that was really the, the birth of <laughs> Aves of May um, I should probably explain where that name came from <laughs> So Aves um, is actually a Latin word and um, it, it means birds and uh, we were trying to find something that we both liked and we both love birds <laughs> but also it's not just that because birds I think often have uh, well they symbolize like a kind of peace and uh, hope and um, we, we kind of wanted we wanted to express that through our music um, the kind of music that we created and um and then the, the of may part um was because well i think may is is considered a month of new beginnings and it was kind of like a new beginning for us <laughs> so a little bit cheesy but um yeah that's, that's where it started off so we've been quite heavily involved with charity live music now scotland um which is established by uh yudi menuhin um, he's a violin player 
and um, this is a wonderful charity and they basically facilitate performances um, in like elderly nursing homes, um, workshops for children with additional support needs and uh, yeah so it's really kind of like community work um, so we got to do quite a lot of work with them which we've been doing for the past couple of years and um, I guess with Aves and May we've also brought out an EP Dawn Chorus, uh, was it early last year? Yeah, time is flying. <laughs> and then our uh, debut album as well, Still the Night, which is actually a Christmas album. And we released that uh, last November. Where can so, we find these uh, albums of that you have made? I think every platform. <laughs> Perfect. I'm, I'm going to go find them and I'm going to put them in the video description so that our audience can check it out. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's up there. And and you can also order through our website at avesamay.com. So avesomay.com. <laughs> and uh, Bandcamp as well. They're up there. Perfect. I'll put up a link in there. And you were referred to us by Justina. And you are also working on a project of her right now. Can you share uh, a little detail of what the project is about? I can do, yeah. Um, so we're kind of at the beginnings of the project with each other, although, um, it, well, we, we went to university together. Again, she came across to study her master's, um, so we were there for a year together. And after she finished her master's, uh, we decided that we wanted to put some music together. But then, of course, the pandemic hit, and uh, yeah, she moved back to Sweden. So... Um, yeah, it's, it's been a very exciting project so far, because when I came across to Denmark and I felt that little bit closer <laughs> to her um, physically, which is very nice. Um, so we started meeting, I think, in March, um, well, online, <laughs> obviously, and uh, we just started setting ourselves like goals um, each week. Um, of writing a bit of music and uh, it's been a different process for me in the terms that we've worked because we've been like recording bits and then sending it over to the other person and um, the other person kind of um, gets some inspiration from what they've heard and adds to that so it's just building and building um, which is really nice um, but yeah we hope to get some other musicians in on the music as well and uh, yeah, I think the music uh, is hard to describe <laughs> how it's like. It's, it's very contemporary, quite funky, groovy. Um, we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> Planning to meet physically with each other soon, um, if we can, to actually start rehearsals and uh, hopefully see it come to life. I am looking forward to seeing what the two of you came up with because uh, I, I, I get a feeling that your style is a little different but, than Justina, but I think when the two come together, it could be very interesting. Yeah, I think, I think we're complementing each other quite nicely, which is, uh, yeah, it's turned out very well <laughs> in that respect. Um, yeah, because I think each person like has their strengths in their playing and then which complements the other person's um, mm -hmm. strength. So I think it's just this, uh, yeah, it, it just makes the work flow, um, which is great because, because the last year it's workflow has been fairly slow because of um, the pandemic and it's, it's not flown, flowed as well as um, I would have maybe expected normally. Uh, so it's nice just to see a bit of momentum um, in our work. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And speaking of pandemic, and I know it has affected uh, a lot of musicians because live performances are not feasible. So a lot of them will turn into doing a different kind of project. And from my conversation with you earlier, you have mentioned that you have started focusing on composing more. And you have started a project in May or launched it, uh, where you share an original composition that we can buy the music uh, from each month. Tell us about this project and uh, what can we expect when we uh, follow this project month after month? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I really enjoy composing and I've never really done much about getting my music out there or sharing it. And I've just been thinking over the past couple of months about um, how I might do that. And uh, I guess 
so many musicians' work um, have gone online recently uh, for the past year, and um, I hadn't. I've not really been taking advantage of that and uh, I think it's such a good way um, or such a powerful, effective way of um, connecting with other musicians and, and sharing your music. Um, but at the same time, it can be a bit uh, daunting <laughs> just kind of stepping out into that. Um, so I didn't think too much about it <laughs> when I decided to release my first piece in May. And I decided that I would uh, release one of my tunes every month because I thought, oh, that would be a manageable um, timescale to work in. Um, just writing the music if I needed to and creating the arrangement and then transcribing that and then getting up online. Uh, so there's, there's quite a lengthy process and um, to actually releasing it <laughs> to the public. Um, but it's been, well, so far really nice because it's, it's given me, uh, yet another goal to work towards each month. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of it. <laughs> in the nature. And the project is called, correct me if I say it wrong, Puka Tunes with Lucy. Did I say it right? Okay. <laughs> I, I think I finally mastered this word <laughs> after so many tries. Um, we get two versions of the music we can choose from. And I have listened to your May tune, and I actually downloaded the sheet music because I really like it. It's called Easter Wedding, and it's a beautiful slow jig. So tell us about uh, what we get in the sheet music when we do purchase it. Where can we find the videos that go with the music? And also, maybe generally, is this project going to reflect um, your musical style, or are you thinking of being more experimental? What can we expect in terms of the style of music from this project? Yeah. I think the, the music is definitely a reflection of my musical style and uh, yeah it's, it's given me a space to kind of get my ideas out there to get them flowing um, which is really nice. <laughs> versions um, that I will make available. Uh, the first version is, well, it will be the arrangement that I actually record in the videos. So I will be releasing the videos um, online, so on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube as well, because um, I'm starting up my YouTube channel kind of more officially now, <laughs> so I've got one video so far. <laughs> um, right somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> looking forward to that growing and growing hopefully <laughs> yeah so um yeah version one um will be the arrangement and with that i will also include just the melody um and also the melody with some chord suggestions um because not everybody might want to play the arrangement um so that's version one and then version two uh, it's just going to be a more stripped down version, so it won't include the full harp arrangement. It will just be the melody and also the melody with chords. So, for example, if another instrument wanted to try play it and didn't want the harp arrangement, then they could purchase that at slightly cheaper. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's all up online and I hope to try and make it as <laughs> public as I can on <laughs> social media. Um, and I will be I will put a link to your uh, web store, which is where I have gone to download the sheet music. Yes. Well, that's where I'm going to make it available um, for the time being. And I'm going to aim to release them at the start of each month. So hopefully I can stick to that. <laughs> Looking forward to it. So you have came to Denmark from UK. And my understanding is that the two country has a very different heart scene. What have you observed right now in Denmark? And, and what drew you to come over to this side of the country? Sure. Um, well, where should I start? I'll start with why I came to Denmark. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it's just a, a personal connection um, that drew me over. And I thought that I would take the opportunity uh, to come and check out the music scene um, mm -hmm. because the harp isn't really uh, very present in, in Denmark, um, well, at least not Scottish harp, it's pretty unheard of. Um, so I, I definitely saw uh, 
a big opportunity there, um, a lot of potential. Um, so yeah, it's not like back home in Scotland at all. But I think that's very exciting. Um, and it's it's very interesting to come to a country where there's uh, be a different focus on some of the music. So I think, uh, in my, from my understanding, that they may be taught more like uh, rhythm, uh, kind of jazz music, uh, kind of funk, um, as opposed to folk music. Like, well, folk music is present in the country, and, and there's some wonderful folk musicians and bands in Denmark. Um, but the the harp is quite rare <laughs> or generally in Scandinavia I think you'd get the the concert harp you'd find that a little bit more but uh, I haven't really come across uh, this instrument <laughs> so yeah I'm quite excited to see where that could go where would you like to see or, or yourself in Denmark in terms of the harp scene or how how would you like to see the harp scene in Denmark to grow if you if you can wish anything and it's gonna come true Two, three years from now, where would you like to be? Where would you like Denmark to be with the heart? Uh, I I think I, I would just like to be, I'd like the heart to be embraced. Um, I, I really want to see it um, like accepted into even other genres because I, I really love um, like genre fusion music. Um, so I don't just want to to kind of keep myself to to folk mu folk music and I'm, I'm very open and I'm open to playing with other musicians and different styles and um I think that's quite exciting so th there's definitely a whole lot of opportunity and uh yeah I want to see the harp at played at more festivals and um I think just more of an awareness because th there's a lot of awareness back in Scotland um and people they really enjoy the harp um, but also I want to see more musicians, um, different musicians, not harpists, actually embracing the harp. Um, because some of my experiences in the past, um, some people that, that maybe don't know how to engage with a harp, um, because it's a wonderful instrument. It's so versatile, it can do so much, but I think because it can, it can do so much and it doesn't maybe have a specific role like a, a guitar, you know, rhythm or a double bass, Find a baseline. A harp can do kind of the whole spectrum, um, but it's just finding you know a good way to um, fit into into music. And I think it can fit into so many different genres. Um, and I would love to see more people just embracing that and uh, yeah, wanting to play with <laughs> harpists. <laughs> I think that when I was little um, and. I come from Hong Kong, and we don't have a folk harp scene in Hong Kong. Majority the, of the harp exposure I've seen are the concert pedal harp, which are very intimidating and seem very difficult to enter. Um, and I, I just think the folk harp is such a good way to get into the harp and have the flexibility to do so many things, and it's easy to get into. And I honestly, I didn't even thought of myself getting into harp because every time I think about a pedal harp I think it's gonna crush me because I'm just such a tiny person <laughs> and I started eventually with a folk harp and I really enjoy the kind of music I can make with a folk harp so I definitely think we don't know what we don't know so if you can get the word out and show people the instrument hopefully that's gonna generate some awareness and engagement exactly yeah it's very accessible um and then hopefully if there's more awareness um, I would love for more harps to become available in the country as well, <laughs> because right now I, I, I think they're very <laughs> sparse. <laughs> I'm, I'm not too sure where you would get a harp, because it would be great to, to start a community of harpists and um, get some teaching on the go. Um, <clears throat> but I need to do my research <laughs> about how to actually access harps, or I guess they'd have to be uh, shipped in from other countries, maybe Germany, I think. Um, yeah, there, there are quite a lot of harp makers in Germany, actually. I was very surprised. Yeah, which isn't so far away. <laughs> but I'm not aware of any harp makers in Denmark. I mean, there might well be. Uh, I'm just not in the know right now. <laughs> well, if, if there's a Denmark maker watching this video, let us know. We would love to connect you with Lucy. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Now, you have started your music career about three years ago as a professional musician. Um, I would like to hear about some of the obstacles and challenges that a, a new musician 
space in sort of getting their career jump starting. And also, what are some of the things that keep you continually motivated and engaged? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's it's definitely been a journey in the past three years, and、um, the pandemic hasn't really helped. But then again, it has allowed for other opportunities. So that's been interesting. <clears throat> I would say、um, when I graduated from、um, the the conservatoire in Glasgow. At the time, I didn't have any projects on the go or any bands on the go, and I would say like I regret it. But I think it would have been easier if I'd had other projects、um, to then kind of step into and you know carry those on、um, after rather than starting from scratch.、Um, but it was quite nice starting from a blank canvas and just thinking, right, where do I go from here? <laughs> I I did enjoy that challenge, and you know that's where. Um, my duo waves in May、uh, came, and、um, it's been really fun. The work that we've done over the past few years, and especially in、um, getting to the studio and recording our EP and album, and、uh, I've really like, thoroughly enjoyed、uh, those those processes. And it's really kind of brought the whole composition or to another level,、um, which is really exciting to then you know, see it as a kind of physical product at the end. Uh, so that's been wonderful.、Um, then、uh, challenges, yeah. Well, I guess the pandemic has not really hit the best time、um, at the start of my <laughs> my career.、Um, but I found myself to be writing a lot、uh, of music over the past year, or so、um, which is nice because I think for many musicians、uh, it can be quite a hectic lifestyle. And they just dream of some time off. I actually just write music, <laughs> but then the problem was that when the pandemic hit,、um, everybody's got all this free time. But it was very hard to get into that creative space、um, for a long time for musicians.、Um, uh, and I think for me, like it really helps to have、um, focuses or you know, kind of deadlines to work towards and projects and gigs.、Um, And、so that's why I feel right now there's a lot more flow because,、uh, well, for example, with、um, Justina, we're setting ourselves goals each week, so that you know that helps, obviously. But <laughs> when you're at the, <laughs> the, the, the well, the start of the pandemic and just all this time and not knowing when you're gonna、uh, get working again, and well, that yeah, that was hard.、Um, and I think、um, the past half year. Um, it's kind of been on a, it's been on an up. <laughs> it's it was it was really helped coming across to Denmark because it's kind of just given my head a, just some space just to to reset um just to take myself out of the the environment um that I was in back in Glasgow and um yeah it's just created some more space and um I just decided when I came over to do some things that I actually enjoyed doing so not necessarily related to music but um you know musicians are generally creative people um so well I enjoyed knitting <laughs>、yes. <laughs> uh, yeah just just small things but I just found you know when I And put my creative to those things, and I was kind of taking a bit of pressure off myself. Then gradually over time, my creativity kind of came back again and、um, grew again, which was yeah, it was really lovely. So、uh, feel I'm in a better, better workflow <laughs> now. But yeah, there's a lot of time that's that's spent on、um, composing, composing melodies, and、uh, yeah, I. I I I do enjoy that that process,、um, but you, you can spend hours and hours <laughs> working on it <laughs> until the final product of a you know piece of well a score、um, to sell. There's a yeah, there's a lot of hours that have gone into that. <laughs> I remember talking to my teacher Josh Lang because he writes music as well, and、um, looking at the. The details that go behind the scene, I, and I just get to hear it because I happen to talk to him during my lesson, and it's it's such a lengthy process. And I remember him asking me, 
would you like to try writing music one day? And I, I said, uh, no, <laughs> I'm not sure if I can put in all that time and commitment into it. And so, so many times we forget the work that go behind the scene. I, I guess it goes with this, a lot of things that we do, right? Like even knitting. Yeah. You, you think about how many hours we put on the needles before something comes to life. Um, and I, I really appreciate that uh, the musicians are spending the time in, you know, keeping their creative juice going and pumping out work. Uh, on a regular uh, basis, and and I, I I very much appreciate that, and I hope our audience uh, will get to see that the music doesn't just happen on its own, <laughs> and sometimes there's there's quite a bit of a could could have a bit of a uh, struggle to even get that creativity going, right? Like you said, so I think that's that it's great that you're sharing that with us. Thank you so much. Do you see yourself staying in Denmark for the next little while then? Is that, is that where we can potentially find you, hopefully, when, when um, travel is possible and we can attend festivals and uh, gigs? Well, to be honest, I don't know. Um, I hope to know fairly soon. <laughs> but um, I need to make a decision for after the summer. But um, I actually, I would love to stay here for a bit longer because I feel I've just come across and I've uh, settled down and... Um, I'm starting to learn some Danish as well, <laughs> which is oh, cool. Awesome. <laughs> I wanted to continue that <laughs> while I have the opportunity. Um, but yeah, I would really love to tap into the music scene a bit more here and and generally more in Scandinavia, actually. Um, these, these countries, like I've always felt kind of drawn to them and I've not really had the opportunity to explore them before. And I've wanted to visit Sweden for years and finally I can go across uh, hopefully and work with Justina. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not in a rush to <laughs> get away from that. I'd rather just check out and see what opportunities there are. And, and hopefully now that things are starting to open up a bit more and, and it's a little bit easier to see or meet people, um, I can actually start meeting other musicians and uh, yeah connecting um a bit more with them and so. thanks to the internet i'm able to enjoy your music all the way in canada thanks to youtube <laughs> and your website um what are the best way for us to stay connected with your your work and projects uh well i think through facebook and instagram right now that's kind of that's my main social media platforms i i don't do twitter unfortunately <laughs> sorry <laughs> Um, yeah, those two, and yeah, of course, my my website, uh, lucyhendry.com. Um, oh, for Facebook, yeah, my name is uh, Lucy Hendry Music, I think, and uh, in Instagram, it's just Lucy Hendry. So. I'm gonna find the links and I'll put it in the <laughs> video description for our audience so we can stay in touch with your work. Great, thank you very much. Thank you so much for spending the time and talking with me. I, it's really lovely to uh, get to see that our guests are working together. I, I think in some ways the music scene is more interconnected than I think, but then it's also very dispersed. Like it, it can be, I guess, in Scandinavia, especially when there are not a lot of you. So good luck with your musical journey and where you are. And I look forward to seeing what you're going to create with Justina and also on your own. Thank you very much, Victoria. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.